Hi there, I'm Sean Dillman. If you're watching this video, then you're looking for the best ScanSnap home settings. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I consider to be the best settings for the most common scan jobs and my recommendations for how to configure your scanning profiles. If you own a ScanSnap iX1600, iX1400, iX1300, iX100, or SV600 scanner, this video is for you. At the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can download my simple guide, which will help you with understanding and applying the settings that I'll be discussing. As always, if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. At this point, I want to thank everyone who's watched my Ricoh ScanSnap videos, including my review videos, unboxing videos, comparison videos, and software videos. I'm making this video because people contact me all the time asking, how can I get the most out of my ScanSnap scanner? The short answer is that you can get the most out of it by scanning all of the important things in your life, all the time, like documents, receipts, cards, and photos, to help keep your desk and life more organized. The long answer is that before you start scanning, you should give some thought to how you'll be organizing your scan jobs, where you'll be scanning to, and what settings you'll be using. These considerations are exactly what we'll be looking at in this video. We'll be looking at things like save location, color mode, resolution, file format, scan mode, scan quality, color detection, blank page removal, optical character recognition, and automatic file naming. Before I start, please note that this video is sponsored content brought to you by Rico. But as always, all of the opinions expressed are my own. I also want to give you a short explanation about the difference between Fujitsu ScanSnap and Rico ScanSnap. In short, they're basically the same thing. Rico and Fujitsu are both large companies that make information technology products. On September 1st, 2022, Rico purchased Fujitsu Scanning Division and brought it under the Rico brand. Scanners made before April 2023 are branded as Fujitsu, and scanners made after April 2023 are branded as Rico. But aside from having different branding, the scanners are exactly the same. As I mentioned, ScanSnap Home is the software that powers the ScanSnap iX1600, iX1400, iX1300, iX100, and SV600 scanners. If you need an introduction to ScanSnap Home, please see my install walkthrough video. In this video, I'm assuming that you already have a ScanSnap scanner with ScanSnap Home installed. I'm also assuming that your most common scan jobs are documents, receipts, business cards, and or photos. Of course, you may scan other things, but for the most part, I'll focus on these four types, which should give you all of the information you need to understand how to configure the ScanSnap Home settings, no matter what you're scanning. Starting with documents, there are many different default scanning profiles in ScanSnap Home that are good options for scanning documents, including scan to folder, scan to email, save documents, scan to print, share docs, and other specific profiles, including magazine in PDF, healthcare, school handout, and children's works. I'll talk more about these specific profiles later, but for now, I'll show you the main profile I use for scanning documents, which is scan to folder. Scan to folder is a basic profile that's used to send a scanned document from your ScanSnap scanner to a folder on your computer. Within this profile, there are all kinds of settings that you can configure, and this is how I do it. First, I change my save to location to a folder located in my Microsoft OneDrive folder. I do this because OneDrive is a cloud storage service that automatically backs up files and folders. And by sending all of my scanned documents to a folder within my OneDrive folder, I know that all of my documents are backed up on my computer and to my OneDrive folder on the cloud. If anything happened to my computer, like if it got lost, stolen, or destroyed, my files would be safe on the cloud and I could put everything back onto my new computer without suffering any data loss. If you use Dropbox, Google Drive, or any other cloud storage service, you can achieve this same effect by saving your scans to a folder within those services. If you don't want your documents to be backed up to the cloud, then simply select a convenient folder for saving your scans, like in the My Documents folder. The next settings I configure are the ones related to color, scanning side, image quality, rotation, and file format. For color mode, the options are automatic color, gray, and black and white. I leave color mode set to the default automatic setting because if I scan a document that contains color, I want my scanner to detect this and save it in color. And if I scan a document that's black and white only, I also want my scanner to detect that. I don't want a black and white document to be scanned in color because scanning in color can take longer and require more storage space. If you're certain that you'll be scanning documents that are only color or only black and white, you may wish to select one of these settings instead of the default automatic setting. 
You'll also see that there's a grayscale setting, but I generally don't recommend this setting for documents, and I'll explain more about grayscale scanning when I discuss scanning receipts and photos. Next up is scanning side. The two options are duplex and simplex. I generally use the default duplex setting because sometimes I scan things that have content on both sides of the page, like bank statements, tax documents, insurance policies, medical forms, legal contracts, and pay stubs. If there's information on the back of a page, I want my scanner to detect it and save the information from both sides. If I scan a document in duplex mode and it turns out that the back side is blank, I leave the blank page removal option enabled by default, which will detect if there's a blank page and not save it as part of my scan. For people who definitely know that they want only the one side of the document to be scanned, they can select simplex scanning side and only one side of the document will be scanned. This is something that I'll discuss more when I talk about scanning receipts and photos. Next, we have image quality, and the choices are automatic, normal, better, best, and excellent. These terms refer to the resolution and other image processing factors. Here's a general breakdown of what these settings mean for you. When using the automatic setting, ScanSnap Home will dynamically choose the resolution based on the content being scanned. This setting balances quality and speed automatically and is good for mixed documents where you don't want to tweak settings manually, such as for invoices, handwritten notes, and printed reports. Next up is normal. When using normal, the resolution is set at 150 dpi, or dots per inch. This is good for fast scanning with smaller file sizes and is ideal for text-heavy documents where high detail isn't important, such as meeting agendas, contracts, or printed emails that don't include images or fine details. When using better, the resolution is set to 200 dpi, a little better than the 150 dpi provided by normal. This is a standard setting for general purpose scanning and is good for basic documents, forms, and notes, such as insurance forms, school assignments, or typed letters that can benefit from a bit more clarity without creating larger file sizes. When using best, the resolution is set to 300 dpi. This is great for documents with graphics, small fonts, or finer detail, and strikes a balance between file size and clarity, such as for resumes, brochures with design elements, or receipts with small print that needs to be clearly legible. Finally, when using excellent, the resolution is set to 600 dpi. This is a big resolution jump and is useful for high quality scans of detailed images and results in large file sizes and slower scanning speeds. In my opinion, for everyday scanning tasks, I think that the best setting hits the sweet spot for readability, efficiency, speed, and file size. To make this easier to see and understand, I scanned this single image as a test scan using each of the normal, better, best, and excellent modes. Between the normal, better, and best modes, as you can see, the quality is very close and the individual file sizes are smaller. Seven kilobytes on normal, eight kilobytes on better, and nine kilobytes on best. So not a very big difference. Also, when I zoom in very close on this detailed part of the scan, you can see that there isn't a huge difference between the image quality from normal to better to best. Looking at the same image scanned using excellent mode, you can see a significant difference in the shading and small details that are being picked up, and the file size is 326 kilobytes, which is about 45 times larger than normal and 35 times larger than best. Scanning in excellent mode is also noticeably slower than scanning with the other modes, and because the file size is so much bigger, I wouldn't recommend this mode for everyday scanning and would instead suggest going with the best or automatic setting. For users who want to further fine tune their image quality and file settings, they can click on Detailed Settings and then File Size and then select between Low, Large File Size, Medium Low, Medium, Medium High, and High, Small File Size. I recommend leaving this setting at Medium, but if you know that you want to tweak this setting, this is where it's located. The last two settings on the main profile screen are Rotation and File Format. I leave these at the default settings, which are Automatic and PDF. If I accidentally scan a document upside down, I definitely want ScanSnap Home to automatically correct it for me and fix the rotation. Under file format, the choices are PDF and JPEG. For scanning documents, PDF is the standard file format. So that's my choice. But as we'll see when we discuss scanning photos, we'll want to change this to JPEG. Finally, when it comes to naming the document, I recommend using the default setting which allows the software to generate a title automatically using the date on the document if one is available and the title of the document. 
However, I changed the date format to yyyy underscore mm underscore dd so that my files will always be kept in chronological order. If you have any questions about my file management system in general, please see my video series called How to Scan and Organize Everything. Now that we've covered documents, let's talk about scanning receipts. The profile to use for this work is called Receipts. Looking at the settings in this profile, I'll use the default Save To location, which will be the same as the location for my documents, but the receipts will be saved in a subfolder called Receipts. I changed the color setting to black and white because receipts rarely have color, and if they do, I usually don't want the color to be included. As I mentioned in the Documents section, I prefer black and white over grayscale, because with receipts, I typically just want the black and white text, and I'm not interested in seeing other shades of gray. Using this receipt as an example, you can see how scanning in black and white produces a clean, sharp image, whereas scanning in grayscale picks up additional unnecessary details, like the crinkle and fold marks on the receipt. The grayscale file size is also about 10 times larger than the black and white scan, which is another good reason to go with black and white only. Another important feature to set is simplex scanning. I changed the scanning side to simplex or single-sided scanning because receipts are rarely double-sided. However, if I do come across a receipt with important information on the back, like a Best Buy receipt that contains return policy information, I may choose to scan this side as well. Moving on to image quality, as with the settings I use for documents, I recommend using the best setting. We want our receipts to be clear and easy to read, but we don't want the file sizes to be too large, and we don't need the high level of resolution that we would get by using the excellent setting. For rotation, we'll keep the same setting that we used for documents, because we want the ScanSnap Home software to automatically rotate the image if we accidentally insert our receipt into the scanner upside down. We'll also keep the file format as PDF, because we want to be able to detect information in it, like the date, vendor, and amount. We need the document to be in PDF format to unlock this power, so we don't want to scan our receipts in JPEG format. Finally, when it comes to naming the document, I again recommend using the default setting, which allows the software to generate a title automatically using the date on the document, if one's available, and the name of the vendor. I changed the date format to yyyy underscore mm underscore dd, so that my files will always be kept in chronological order. I also suggest that you click here where it says Option so that you can further customize what extracted information will be used for the document name. In addition to having the date and vendor name in the title, I also like to add the amount and find that this is a handy piece of information to have right there in the file name. When you're working with receipts, generally speaking, the date, vendor, and amount are the three most important pieces of information that you want. I'll click on Amount and then click on this top gray button to place it in the Selected column. If I want, I can also drag and drop these items to change the order that they'll appear in the title, but I'll leave it as it is so that my titles will be Date on the Receipt first, Vendor Name next, and then the amount. With respect to amounts, if you're interested in knowing how you can use ScanSnap Home to automatically tally receipts, please see my video called How to Tally Receipts with ScanSnap Home. And if you're looking for even more advanced options for bookkeeping and accounting work, check out my video on the ScanSnap iX 1600 Receipt Edition Scanner that has special integrations with software like QuickBooks Online. Moving on to business cards, the main profile to use is called business cards. Looking at the settings in this profile, the ones that I recommend are the same as the ones that I recommend for receipts, except instead of scanning in black and white mode and in simplex mode, I suggest that you scan in color and that you scan in duplex mode because most business cards contain color and are double-sided. As with receipts, I recommend that you scan your business cards in PDF format so that the software can detect information in them, like names, company names, and phone numbers, and automatically name them based on this information. As with business cards, we can use the information to automatically name the card and detect the information in it so that we can copy and paste it in other applications. Finally, when it comes to the naming feature, I recommend allowing the file to be named using the name of the person and the company name. These are the two most important pieces of information that you'll want when you're looking for a business card in the future. You'll also want the person's phone number, email address, or mailing address, which will be in the card, but you'll first need to remember or see their name or company name to help you find the card. Now that we've covered business cards, let's talk about our photo scanning settings. For photos, the main profile to use is called Photo Album. Scanning photos is different from scanning documents, receipts, and business cards in a few important ways. First, most photos are in color, so we'll want to ensure that we're scanning in color or automatic mode, unless you know that you're scanning only black and white photos, and in that case, you'll want to select grayscale. 
Although I generally don't recommend grayscale scanning for documents and receipts, if you're scanning photos, and in particular if you're scanning black and white photos, you'll want to use grayscale scanning to ensure that you're picking up all of the important details and different shades in the photo. As you can see between these two examples, grayscale scanning produces a much nicer, more detailed image over scanning in black and white mode. Second, I generally recommend using the excellent setting for image quality because if we're scanning photos, we want the best quality possible. If you want to reduce the image size in the future, you can do that. But you can't go the other way around and make a low resolution image larger without suffering some loss of quality. As mentioned, using the excellent setting does create a relatively large file and results in slightly slower scanning times. So if you're scanning a lot of photos and you don't want the higher resolution scan quality, I'd suggest using the best setting. Third, we want to save in JPEG format, not PDF, because JPEG is the best file format for scanning and working with photos. Fourth, as with receipts, most photos don't have anything on the backside. So I suggest using the simplex scanning mode for photos. And if you happen to have a photo with something on the back, like a printed date or handwritten note, you can just flip the photo and scan it again to get the backside. Okay, so we've now looked at the big four scan jobs, documents, receipts, business cards, and photos. But did you know that there's a single profile within ScanSnap Home that brings them all together? As you can see in this description, this profile, ScanSnap Home, automatically identifies the scan document as one of the four types, documents, business cards, receipts, and photos. So whenever you scan a document in ScanSnap Home using this profile, the scanner will automatically detect what kind of document it is and apply the correct settings. As you can see, there are four tabs here, one for each document type, and you can go into each and apply the settings that I've already discussed. My tip here is that you should use the ScanSnap Home profile as your main profile so that you can unlock the speed and power of having your ScanSnap scanner automatically detect whatever you're scanning and apply your custom settings. This scan profile will likely handle the majority of your scanning needs, but for any specific needs you have, you should then configure any further specific profiles. If you look in this area within ScanSnap Home, you'll see that job types are also organized in other ways and that the profiles you can choose from are categorized as recommended, business, personal, cloud, and useful tips. If you're looking for a specific type of scanning workflow that I haven't already mentioned, it may be within one of these categories. For example, some of the more powerful scanning profiles under the business category include Scan to email, which allows you to send a scan directly to an email address. Scan to print, which allows you to send a scan job directly to a printer. And share docs, which allows you to send a scan job directly to a network folder. Other pre-configured scan profiles include business trip expenses, magazine in PDF, manual and catalog, my recipe, postcards and greeting cards, healthcare, school handout, and children's works. These profiles are generally self-explanatory and will send your scan to a folder related to these subjects, and ScanSnap Home will automatically create the appropriate subfolder and set the document type setting. With respect to scanning using ScanSnap Cloud, I've already made a video on that subject, so please be sure to check it out if you'd like more information. Okay, so before I wrap up, if you liked this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to share, I'd love to hear about your experience using ScanSnap Home. Write a comment below and let me know what your favorite scanning profile is, what documents you scan the most, or what ScanSnap Home tips you may have that I may not have covered. For advice on how to scan and organize all of your documents, please see my videos on how to scan and organize everything. So with that, there you have it. Those are my recommended best ScanSnap Home settings. To make it easier for you to use the settings that I've discussed in this video, I've also made a simple guide which you can download for free by visiting my website at www.seandillman.com. Thanks again for watching. As always, I'm Sean Dillman.